हाय एवरीबॉडी टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट कॉलम इंट्रोडक्शन डायग्राम द एक्शियल एंड फ्लेक्जल रेजिस्टेंस ऑफ रेनफोर्स्ड कॉन्क्रीट कॉलम सेक्शंस कैन बी एक्सप्रेस्ड बाय दिस कॉलम इंटरेक्शन डायग्राम द बिहेवियर ऑफ एन एक्शियली लोडेड कॉलम डिपेंड्स ऑन द मैग्नीट्यूड ऑफ द लोड इसेंट्रिसिटी द एक्शियल लोड रेजिस्टेंस हियर आई एम शोइंग on the vertical axis where is the moment resistance i am showing it on horizontal axis the region of this column interaction diagram it is associated with different types of column behavior first of all a concentrically loaded column it is represented by a point say a and this point corresponds to zero eccentricity condition that's why i am writing here e equal to zero again an eccentrically loaded column with a small eccentricity it is represented by this region bounded by ab and this region it is characterized by concrete control failure initiated by concrete crushing and as well an eccentrically loaded column with large eccentricity is represented by this region bounded by bc and this region it is characterized by steel controlled failure caused by steel yielding before concrete crashes another important point here the horizontal axis this one it represents an infinitely large eccentricity condition this line so i am writing here because it corresponds to pure bending in the column so i am writing here pure bending as well eccentricity equal to infinity now in between these two situation i mean this threshold in between these two it is represented by balanced condition and it is characterized by balanced eccentricity that's why i have written here e equal to eb and it shows on this line ob so let's move in the next slide to see more details of it here we will see some key features of this interaction diagram the points on the diagram it represents the combination of axial forces and bending moments corresponding to the resistance of a column cross sections here point 1 corresponds to the 
maximum factored axial load capacity say PR1. For a loaded column with an axial load acting at an eccentricity E. That's what we can see it here. A column loaded with an axial load acting at an eccentricity E. So, the corresponding, we have to come down, corresponding factored moment resistance, it is equal to MR1. So, it's very clear. From here, for this point, so we have to come here to see factored moment resistance. It is MR1. So, each point on the interaction diagram corresponds to the column capacity at a specified load eccentricity. So, this point 1 corresponds to eccentricity, this one, ratio of these two. This one divided by this. So, we can say a column interaction diagram, E determines whether the column has an adequate capacity to carry design loads. That's why a point inside interaction diagram, it represents a combination of PF and MF values within the column capacity. If we think about this point, so it satisfies this one combination of PF and MF values within the column capacity for point 2. Whereas if we think of point 4, so it is a point outside the curve. So, it represents a combination of PF and MF values that exceeds the column capacity. It exceeds the column capacity because it is outside, but this one inside. So, it is within column capacity too, but 4 exceeds the column capacity. Very important point to understand these two points. So let's go in the next slide to see the comparison of two column sections. One important point here I want to mention that a interaction diagram, it is a unique representation of a column with regard to its material properties, cross-sectional dimensions, and the distribution of reinforcement. An interaction diagram corresponds to a specific column with defined material properties, cross-sectional dimensions, and arrangement of reinforcement. So changing any of this, changing any of these parameters would result in different interaction diagram. That's what our discussion is on these diagrams. For an example, if we consider two columns here, column sections here, 
column 1 and column 2, C1 and C2. Here also we put two interaction diagram, C1 and C2. So, both the column, both the columns are identical in terms of cross-sectional dimensions and material properties, both the column. It is identical in terms of cross-sectional dimensions and material properties except for the different amount of reinforcement. If you look at it, size of the reinforcement, here you see the size of the reinforcement. So it is different. So column 1 reinforced here 6 number, this is also 6 number but size is different. So we can say this one having reinforcement ratio rho 1, it is less than rho 2. That is why these two interaction diagram also in two positions. I marked here C1 and row 1, this one, and C2, row 2, this one. And here, if we look at the graph, then we will see the column with larger amount of reinforcement, larger amount of reinforcement, I mean this one, corresponds to the larger load resistance. Looking at, you can see that. Again, if column 1 and 2 are subjected to the same axial load, that's why I put here line with same axial load, say PF. So it intersects here, this intersects here. So MR1, MR2. So with the same axial load, the corresponding moment resistance values are MR1 and MR2, but MR1, it is less than MR2. So now it is very clear to us that's all for today. Thanks for watching.